What we have today is AMD releases their new graphic card RX 9060 XT. So compared to 9070 XT, we have a bit of a card that is in the mid tier range. Let's put it this way. So today we're going to go through this and we're going to go check out the details that, well, specifically specifications and of course, a couple of games with upscaling and regular raw power, just to give you some sort of a comparison. Now, since I haven't had a GPU that is, well, basically 5060 or 5060 Ti from NVIDIA, I'm not going to be able to compare it to those, but I'm still going to compare it to some graphic cards from NVIDIA just to give you a bit of a idea, but still it won't be that, let's say, relevant in terms of performance because I'm going to compare it with uh, RTX 5080 and RTX 4080 Super as I did a um, couple of weeks ago. So in those terms, we're gonna dive in, but first let's go with this card. So this card specifically has 16 gigs of DDR6. We're talking about MSRP in euros, $375, $350. Will they stick? I hope they do because in that terms, the price is outstanding and we'll be having something that is definitely something in the mid tier with a nice price tag. So comparing it to 9070 XT, which was when it launched 1000 euros, but the MSRP was a bit lower, I would say around 800, that wasn't um, sticking to the point. So basically the MSRP, what they stated in general, is something that is just a number on the paper or on the screen or whatever, until the cards actually reach the stores and then we actually see the exact price. But in those terms, we do have to continue with the specs, the features, what this card has. And I do have to say, this card, the Nitro Plus, this is Sapphire RX 9060 XT Nitro Plus, looks amazing. And I'm really digging the design. It has that gunmetal color and it has one RGB line here on the side without anything additionally or unnecessary on it. It's really light when you take into consideration that the GPU is basically two and a half slot and you're having quite small PCB, but a huge heatsink and a triple fan configuration. So I would say the GPU is very light. I didn't expect it. When I picked it up from the box, it was really light. So let's check out this. GPU boost clock is up to 3320 megahertz. Game clock is up to 2780 megahertz. Memory is 16 gigs, as I said, but there is going to be an eight gig version. Honestly, totally relevant uh, in this scenario because I noticed some games did pull uh, around 11 gigs. So yeah, 16 gigs is something that you would be most likely looking at. So we're talking about 128-bit DDR6, 20 gigabit uh, per second effective. We have 2048 stream processors. Uh, it has AMD RDNA 4 architecture and 32 ray accelerators. It supports AMD uh, Hyper RX with uh, AFMF2 uh, DisplayPort 2.1a. And when I'm looking at this, it actually has only three connections. So you have two HDMI and one DisplayPort. So you do need to take that also into consideration, taking the monitors that you'll be connecting. And it gets power from one eight pin connector. We have AMD Fidelity FX uh, Super Resolution 4 with AI upscaling, AMD Radiance Display Engine, AMD Fluid Motion Frames uh, 2 technology. And then we go with something that is here on the card. We have Aero Curve uh, fan blade, 10 layer 20 ounce copper PCB, two ball bearings with fan co quick connect. So basically you can easily clean the fans, trick cooling technology in those terms. And we have the dimensions 300 times 118.25 times uh, 55.1. With the PCI Express uh, connection, it's 131 when we're talking about the white. So you do need to take that also into consideration, even though I don't think anybody uses that. Now, the PCB is quite small and I do have to mention that because it starts from here and you have loads of space for additional cooling where the rear side is basically fully open so it can create additional cooling as a pass through air through that uh, passive heatsink. The 8-pin connection is located somewhere in the middle of the card but basically at the end of the PCB. And there's also one more cool thing. We have three pin, five volts addressable RGB header right at the end of the PCB. So it's located inside and you get the cable inside the box to connect the card directly to your motherboard for easier control. Of course, you have their software to overclock the GPU. You have their software also to adjust the RGB lights 
and loads of other information that you could grab from it so now let's go into gaming when we check out uh, we have of course uh, some synthetic benchmarks and we have the actual gaming Going with Time Spy, we have uh, overall score is 16,507 and the GPU is 16,637. Time Spy Extreme is 8,123 while the GPU score is 76,028. I paired it up with AMD Ryzen 9 9950X 3D just to give the maximum uh, breathing room for the GPU, even though 9800X 3D would be even more than enough but this was already uh, done build so i just placed the gpu inside and basically with that thing i could compare it with those two gpus that i mentioned and that you can see in the charts uh, then we have steel nomad uh, the score was 3787 with uh, 37.88 fps going with first games that use raw power so those x we have average 36.7 and the maximum is 52. It really is somewhere in the mid. And I'm testing all the games are in 4K ultra details. And uh, basically why I didn't go with 2K and 1080p, I really wanted to have a comparison with some uh, cards. And since the RTX cards were tested all on 4K resolution, I just wanted to continue that segment and stick with that. So you get some sort of a idea with the fps of course in 1440p and then 1080p you get much better fps score without a doubt and uh, where would it stack would be somewhere as a mid-range card then we go with for honor average is 66.04 and the maximum is 83.01 uh, pubg now this is interesting so average is 41 which is not that good in 4k uh, maximum was 182 depends on the scenario so i wouldn't take that maximum into consideration with the thermals at 56 degrees uh, shadow of tomb raider average is 30 minimum is 69 maximum is 41 and the 95 percent is 32 so yeah kind of really low in 4k but uh, what could what could you expect from a mid-range card then we go with uh, hogwarts legacy where the average without anything so this is just 4k ultra ray tracing Average is 26, minimum is 14, and maximum is 44. 1% is 18 with 52 degrees on the GPU. Now, when you activate FSR frame generation with ultra performance, on average you get 85 FPS, 26 on the minimum, maximum is 135, and 1% is 27 with 54 degrees. Spider-Man Miles Morales, we have 54 on average, 39 on minimum, and 101 with maximum with 52 degrees. And with frame generation activated, average is 140, minimum is 73, and maximum is 166. Thermals, the same 52. Spider-Man Remastered, you get average 43, minimum is 25, and the maximum is 111, 51 degrees. When you turn on FSR frame generation and ultra performance, you get 148 on average, 42 on minimum, and 168 on maximum. FPS with 52 degrees of the GPU. Quite solid, I would say. Witcher 3, now Witcher 3 next generation it, uh, has support only for FSR 2. We have average 29, minimum is 21 and maximum is 58. With FSR 2 we have 41, 25 and 69. Terminals 53 to 54. And finally we go with Cyberpunk. Now this is something you'll see the most difference because it's the latest game that I actually have. Maximum is 78 without the FSR, with the average of 25. FSR turned on you get 209 at the maximum and average is 130 with 51 degree on average when we're talking about the thermals for the GPU. So I know I gave you loads of numbers quite quickly and you can pause if you wish to give it a comparison with RTX 5080 and RTX 4080 Super. But in general, what I can say is, of course, it will perform much better in 1440p. And I skipped that part specifically because I wanted to just, as I stated, give you a comparison with other cards that are indeed much stronger, where I'm still lacking the review for 9070, but that will come next week, most likely, because of the Computex and everything got uh, rescheduled, and unfortunately that happened. But with the 9060 XT, this could be a great mid-range card. And I, I'm saying could be just because of the price. So hopefully they will stick to the MSRP and be with the price at euros, as I stated, $375, $250, which would bring to the point that uh, AMD will bring out a cool card 
in 1080p and 1440p for a nice solid price, which I do have to admit. And specifically, if you turn on FSR, you'll get much more upscaling with frame generation, giving you uh, better visuals. Now, of course, as I stated, uh, the same thing as for the NVIDIA frame generation, you're getting a slight lag, possibly slight lag, which in that scenario, I don't think you'll be able to get in FPS games, Battle Royale games and other first person shooter games, right? So for adventures and the games that I mentioned, apart from the PUBG, which doesn't support any of those, you will definitely benefit with this card in 1080p without a doubt, you'll get like a zillion FPS. But uh, in 1440p, you'll be quite solid if the MSRP sticks in 1440p with this card. And I think that's that could be quite all right. But until we see the prices in the stores and until we see something conclusive with the price tag in general, this is the only thing that I can say. So you can see the numbers, you can see all the benchmarks and everything all in all, but the final conclusion can't be done without uh, actually seeing the price tag that would be final for you guys to actually buy the card. And that's basically it. In general, what I can say regarding the Sapphire cards, well, basically I don't have to say anything because the cards look outstanding. They look amazing in general, all of their series and the cards that you can actually count on. There is no coil wine. I do have to mention uh, with all the games, with all the benchmarks that I've de done, there was literally nothing. And 51 to 55, eventually, I think that's quite solid. Specifically, we're talking about small PCB, but a huge cooler with three fan configuration. I don't think you have to worry about thermals, even in a worse case than this. This case is really outstanding. Two huge fans at the front, giving nice intake and two fans here at the bottom. I think we don't have to go further with that. But in general, yeah, that's it. That's all I can say for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it gave you a glimpse if you were expecting a 4K gaming on this card. Only with AI upscaling and uh, multi-frame generation to give you that specific boost just to push you, well, definitely double over uh, 60 FPS. But without it, I don't think you'll be able so. This card is definitely targeted for 1080p, without a doubt. 1440p, sure, you could. And with upscaling, I don't have to mention anything. So guys, thank you for watching today's video. Hope it gave you, as I said, a bit of an insight on everything. And if you liked it, well, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell. See you next time. Bye-bye.